All right, so today I want to cover ball python genetics. And as a matter of fact, someone posted a comment under one of my videos and said, hey, can you do a video about dominant, co-dominant, and recessive? And when I started in ball pythons about uh, five or six years ago, it was extremely confusing and it took me quite a while to figure it out. And what I actually did just the other day, I went on YouTube and I looked at a bunch of videos and I probably looked at 10 videos and it was extremely confusing. You know. I I could follow them now, but I was thinking, you know, back then when I first started in ball pythons, I'm not sure I could follow these guys. There's one guy with a Punnett square, and about halfway through, it's kind of got jumbled in the middle. There's another guy, he, he just pretty much broke out with all these encyclopedia terms. It's like, unless you're a scientist, you can't really follow this guy. And then I realized, you know, this is a pretty tough topic to cover, especially if you're explaining it to someone who doesn't really know genetics getting into ball pythons for the first time and you know trying to figure out what they're gonna get when they pair up some of these snakes so what I'm gonna try to do in this video is I'm gonna actually try to break it down to the simplest level so the very basic beginner can understand ball python genetics so if we think about uh, the genetics, what, basically what we call is a morph. And a morph is a color and pattern mutation that is genetically transferred from one snake to another. And if you don't have any morphs, what you have is what we call a normal ball python. It's also called a classic in the UK, or it's called the wild type ball python. And that is actually what I have around my neck. This is a really big female. She just laid like 13 eggs look at how big this girl is she is a monster one of the biggest ball pythons that I've ever seen she laid a bunch of eggs and then she's been slamming some big rats this girl actually has been eating rats that my retex won't eat really huge you know adult female rats I've never seen a ball python eat rats that big she is a really big snake and this is basically what a wild type ball python is so so if you think about genetics it can actually have zero, one, or two copies of the same gene. So if you think about, for example, like my bamboo, you can either have zero genes, which would be like this, this snake has zero genes of everything. <laughs> if, you think, if you breed a wild type, with a wild type, you get all wild types. There's no genetics involved. You don't get any supers or, you know, hets or anything. All you get is wild type ball pythons. There's no genetics going on at all. And if you breed this with the bamboo, what happens is the bamboo transfers over to some of these and some of them can have one copy of the bamboo gene or some can have two copies of the bamboo depending on what the parents are and and you really can't have more than two so for example uh, you can't have three copies of the bamboo gene you can the maximum you can really have of any gene is two copies of the gene and it really depends so if we're talking about recessive versus dominant or co-dominant in the recessive, if you just have one copy of the gene, you can't tell that it is a recessive. As a matter of fact, this has one copy of a recessive gene and you can't tell. <laughs> if I gave you the snake, you would think, oh yeah, yeah that, that's a normal type, well, you know, wild type ball python. Well, the, the thing about recessive is, is if it has one copy of the gene, there's really no way that you can tell. And in some cases, there are hints, there's like markers on the snake, you know, on some of the het pides, it has one copy of the pie gene. Sometimes you can see like, um, tracks along the belly sometimes you can see a little bit of white coming up the belly and sometimes with the ghost it kind of you know with one copy of the gene sometimes it fades it out a little bit but the, you know in most cases when we're talking about a recessive mutation if you have one copy of the gene you can't tell at all that it has one copy of the gene versus if you had something like a bamboo you can it's obvious that that's a bamboo i can pull a bamboo out and show you that snake if you bred a bamboo with a normal you get 50 percent bamboos and probably the best way that i can explain it is i have my computer here what i want to do is i'm actually going to pull up a genetic calculator and we can kind of go through some of the genetic combos and i can show you what we expect when we pair these which parents have one or two 
two copies of the genes and what we see as far as the offspring. So let me jump on my computer and let's check that out. All right, so I am here on the world of ball pythons on the genetic wizard, and I'm gonna try to walk you through the difference between dominant, co-dominant, and recessive. And this is a really cool place to do it because, you know, I used to spend hours and hours on here plugging in. This is really where I master genetics, plugging in the male and female, hitting calculate, and figuring out what you get as the result. So the male you put over on the left, the female you put over on the right, and if you if you leave them blank and you hit calculate, essentially what you get, if you scroll down here, you get a normal male, a normal female, and then the results are on the bottom. You get 100% wild type normal ball pythons. Essentially no genetics at play. There's nothing transferred besides just, you know, breeding a wild type to a wild type. And there's no genetics, no statistics at all. Really simple. So now if we move into, say for example, a co-dominant. The bamboo happens to be co-dominant and I have a really nice bamboo, one of my favorite genes. So so for example, if we type in bamboo, over on the left we cross a bamboo male with a female. And what we, what we essentially get, you can see the parents there, the male is the bamboo. We get 50% normal and 50% bamboo. So essentially what it's doing is you have, and it's, so for every gene, uh, you have uh, one or two copies of that gene. So for, for this bamboo, you have one copy of the bamboo gene and half of that gets transferred to half the babies and the other half of the, uh, I guess the genetics at the same location as the bamboo is the wild type. So the wild type gene gets transferred to half the babies. So with a co-dominant, actually you can have uh, the difference between codominant and do dominant is with the codominant you can have two copies of the gene with the dominant you can't have two copies of the gene so so since this is codominant let me just give you an example real quick we'll have a bamboo male and a bamboo female and hit calculate and what essentially happens is you get uh, it <laughs> looks like there's a glitch in the software, which is essentially what you get is you get 25% normal, 25% super bamboo, and 50% bamboo. So 25% actually has two copies of the gene. It should be right here in the middle. We should be able to click on it. That is actually a blue-eyed leucistic with two copies of the gene, which is interesting that the software kind of has a glitch. You know, the other, the there's another, um, there's another codominant that has a blue-eyed leucistic super, and that is the lesser. So if we typed in a lesser and a lesser and did the, the calculation, it's essentially the same thing. It's a codominant. And there shouldn't be a glitch in this one. So this, yeah, so here we go. So this has 25% normal. 50% lesser and 25% super lesser. So the super lesser actually has two copies of the gene and we can actually click on super lesser and it'll bring us to another page and it'll show us what a lesser is with two copies of the lesser gene. This is a super lesser. It looks essentially like um, uh, there's a lot of different genes in the blue-eyed leucistic complex. There's the super bamboo, the super lesser, uh, there's the Russo, there's the, the Mojave, all the ones. Basically, if you have two copies of the genes, they all come out as white snakes with blue eyes, which is pretty interesting. The cool thing about this is you can hit the back button and it goes right back to where you were, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so that is a codominant. So you can kind of get a handle on the codominant. You, if you have one copy of the gene, you have a lesser. Two copies of the gene, it's it's a white snake. So you can either have zero, which is the normal, one or two. So now here's the interesting thing is, is if you, you compare the codominant to the dominant. For some reason, the dominant genes don't have a super and we can't quite figure out why and if we type in for, I want to see what the software does for example if we type in pinstripe and so we cross a pinstripe with a pinstripe a pinstripe is dominant and if you cross them together there is essentially no super form so here's the male and the female pinstripe you cross it together you get 25% normal 25% pinstripe 
pinstripe. So you see there's no super pinstripe here because no one's ever made one. Now the question is, is why hasn't anyone ever made a super pinstripe? And that is a very good question. There's a lot of speculation out there. Some people say that there's uh, something with the genetics where if you try to put two copies of the gene, it just doesn't fit in the, in the, the, in the DNA or whatever it is in there. I'm no geneticist, but I'm not sure exactly, you know, what What's wrong with you know the, the the location on the DNA where you can't actually have two copies of the pinstripe and some people say that if you actually have two copies of the pinstripe gene it is a lethal combination and it actually dies in the egg so essentially what you have is 25% um, not developed or not fertilized. They basically come out as slugs or in some cases they partially develop and then they die before they hatch. And I'm not sure exactly what the true answer is with dominance uh, the mutations, but that's essentially what it is. Spider is another one. Let's see what happens in this software if we put in spider. Let's take a look at this. So we cross the spider with the spider that is another dominant mutation. We hit calculate and there should be no super spider. Yep, that's the same thing. So 25% spider, 50% spider, and 25% normal. So, um, you know, I've heard some people say that if you do like a super spider, especially that it is, uh, it is essentially, I've seen, you know, a lot of speculation where it's actually a white snake that dies in the shell. It partially develops and dies before it hatches. I've seen some people actually state that, and there's a lot of debate over actually if a super spider actually exists. Some people say that, you know, they think they've produced it, but they haven't proven it out. So there's a lot of debate as far as, uh, you know, the dominant and, and uh, uh, as far as the super in the dominant genes. So that is the co-dominant versus the dominant. So let's talk about about recessive. Recessive is a completely different animal and a recessive essentially is something like an albino. So let's do, uh, let me see if I can uh, find my keyboard here in the dark. <laughs> so this is an albino. If we breed an albino to a normal, and some people say, all right, I want to breed my albino to a normal. What do we get? We get 100% het albino. So essentially, the het albino looks like, it's visually, it looks just like a normal snake. So in a, a visual albino, essentially what it has is it has two copies of the albino gene, and one copy uh, gets transferred to all the offspring. So all the offspring have one copy of the albino, and you really can't tell that it is het albino. Sometimes you can, you know, like in the pies, you'll see some markers, but you know, typically with recessive genes, you really can't tell. So for example, yeah, if you bought an albino or a recessive gene, you say, all right, I wanna save some money and instead of buying another visual, I wanna buy a het. So for example, you, if you did uh, albino crossed with a het albino, uh, there's no picture here because it looks like a normal snake. Uh, so, so an albino crossed with a head albino, what you would get is you get 50% head albino, which would look like a normal snake, and 50% albino visuals with two copies of the gene. And so, for example, here's another example. If you wanted to have a whole clutch of visual albinos, the only way you could really do it is to breed a visual albino with a visual albino. They both have two copies of the gene. Essentially, you'd get all 100% albinos with all, all the offspring would have two copies of the genes. So essentially what it is, is it's albinos, I would say recessive, is similar to codominant but you can't see one copy of the gene. This is kind of like, it's, it's almost like with two copies of the gene here, you, you're looking at the white snake <laughs> in the bamboo. So the, the super bamboo is a white snake, and that's essentially what the visual uh, recessive albino is. This is the white snake. And, and, and you really can't see one copy of the gene like the bamboo. You know, the bamboo with one copy of the gene, obviously it's a bamboo, it's not a normal. And the albino, if you have one copy of the gene, it's, it's essentially invisible. So it's like a 
a bamboo and someone turned the lights out, you can't see one copy of the gene if you're dealing with recessive genes, which is pretty interesting. And if you really want to get into kind of some advanced genetics here, say for example, uh, you want to do, this is really, this is really fun to play around with. Like say for example, if you wanted to breed like a GHI, uh, pinstripe, coral glow with uh, uh, like a pastel, uh, 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 let me find my back button here. <laughs> My keyboard's layout's completely different. Uh, so, for example, uh, let me see. Uh, I almost need a little light, but the problem is if I put a little light in here, it is going to uh, uh, kind of wash out the screen. So, for example, if we had a pastel, calico, bamboo. As a matter of fact, I, I, I wanted to do not uh, recessive. So, I kind of want to do all uh, visuals. Uh, I want to do a pinstripe. So if we had like a coral glow GHI pinstripe crossed with a bamboo calico pastel. So you have three gene combos for the male and the female, all visual combos. You hit calculate, and this is going to blow your mind <laughs> what you can actually get here. So take a look at this. This is everything you would get from that cross. If you want if you want some really impressive crosses, as a matter of fact, there's some people that cross three gene snakes together and they don't really know what the results are. Look at all the different results that you can get from a three gene crossed with a three gene. And a lot of times people are like posting their whole clutch on these forums and they're like, what in the world is, is this snake? You know, it's some of this stuff is uh, it's pretty interesting. And some of it kind of has uh, um, common names too, like the calico is also called the bubblegum or the sugar or white-sided. <laughs> I didn't even know those names existed. It's pretty interesting to see kind of the common names. And then the interesting thing is, you know, if here on, uh, um, uh, on this website, you can actually go into some of these and click on them, like Pastel Calico GHI, you're wondering what that looks like, you click on that and you can kind of match it up to see if, you know, that looks like, um, that looks like kind of the, the snake that you got from the results and then you can kind of match it up here on World of Ball Pythons and kind of figure out what your clutch is. This is a really awesome website and you can go back and you can get all your results too, which is, which is pretty cool, it keeps everything. So that is a really powerful website if you want to go here and kind of play around and figure out the difference between all the genetics, the recessives, the dominance, and the co-dominance. All right, so there you have it. Now you should know the difference between dominant, co-dominant, and recessive. And this snake I have around my neck here, this is a bamboo. Remember, this is co-dominant because you can have a super form with two copies of the bamboo gene which results in an all white snake and this is I'd say this is by far one of my favorite snakes because it looks really good as a standalone morph you start mixing it with others you can get the super which is an all white snake which is always one of the most popular snakes that everybody loves the all white snake with the blue eyes so that's pretty much it thanks for watching and I will see you next time